They say they are following God's will, but are they really abusing children? We'll have a shocking investigation. Inside Edition, right now. Raising the rafters in this church, trying to scare the devil out of these kids with a bizarre form of prayer. But is it spiritual healing or downright child abuse? I get hit so hard one time that I almost flew over the dance. If you look at the kids' faces, it's really quite fascinating. They're dead. Reporting from the Simpson trial, thank you for watching Inside Edition today. Over the years, we've investigated a number of religious organizations, not traditional ones so much, but fringe religions. Some of them can be dangerous. Today, we'll take a look at a religious sect that may be abusing children. Inside Edition has been exposing corrupt televangelists for years, but what we're about to show you goes far beyond religious fraud. With the help of the Dallas-based Trinity Foundation, we've been investigating a religious group based in North Carolina, and what Steve Wilson discovered is very disturbing. The beautiful foothills of Western North Carolina have provided what may have been the perfect hiding place for the dirty little secrets you're about to see. You have to live with the guilt of the things that you allowed to go on and the things that you witnessed and never said anything about. She's hiding her face not just in shame for what she's done, but also in fear of what others might do to her for telling what's been going on inside their church, the Word of Faith Fellowship here in Spindale, North Carolina. Outsiders seldom see the decidedly different way this secretive sect worships God, regularly screaming to split the ears of devils, delivering this man and others from demons inside them so they can walk with God. Until now, many of the members may have been kept in the dark about allegations of child abuse, sexual molestation, unlawful imprisonment, and cult-like mind control techniques. Their leader is 55-year-old Jane Whaley, a former school teacher with no formal theological training. And according to former church members like Roberta Priest, a woman with little patience for followers who won't follow. What, what she would do is say, this is, what, this is the way that I believe God wants us to go, and everybody just went. In the name of Jesus, thou foul devils of... And among the latest to follow along, disgraced TV preacher Robert Tilton. He's divorced his wife, married a Jane Whaley disciple, and attempted a comeback on a handful of stations screaming at devils. Devils, go! Now he does just like he's learned to do here in Spindale. You're not going to steal our families in Jesus' name. But it's not just the unconventional way they worship. Since early last fall, we've been investigating what they've been doing inside the church to their youngest, most helpless children, all in the name of God. I know a few things. I know Eddie Taylor, who just left the church after six years, says he got the shock of his life one Sunday morning when he just happened to go to a part of the church he'd never visited before. One time I walked in the nursery, and all the kids were tied in the chair with a cloth behind them tied to the chair where the kids couldn't get out and play. I don't really know. I mean, they were just sitting there. Roberta Priest knows she worked in the nursery where no matter how young or fussy, children who are brought here are regularly restrained with their bed sheets at the direction of church leaders. The screams you hear are the prayers they're subjected to in a nearby bathroom when they won't sit completely still. Why tie them up? Because they got out of their chairs if you didn't. And, and according to Jane, that was the restraints of God. In fact, something was said about how we tie the children up in the, in the nursery. And she came back within the next day or two saying, don't ever say that. Just say that's their seatbelts. <laughs> Older children endure it, too. This father and his young son are screaming to break generations of demons. Across the church, another dad is angry that his young daughter won't take hold, settle down, and obey Jesus. Every parent here is expected to teach their children how to participate in these ear-shattering shouts, often for hours at a time. We asked Dr. Ruth Peters, a respected child psychologist, to watch lots of our videotape. 
her conclusion? Oh, this is definitely child abuse. There's no, there's no excuse in my mind for it. If you look at the kids' faces, it's really quite fascinating. They're dead. They really are. Their faces are dead. Their eyes are dead. They're not really responding. I think they're very scared, but after a couple years of this, they become numb to it. They know how to walk the walk and talk the talk, and they just go through it, and they know that they will be punished probably severely if they aren't well-mannered. I get hit so hard one time that I almost flew over the desk. You know, and then that's when I realized, well, hey, this is not right. This is abuse. How did you and Jerry Kane, she's found it's no picnic for adults in this church either. You have to conform. Uh, they teach you total authority. They are the authority where to be subservient. Even to want to see my daughter, who was still a minor, I was never allowed to live with her again. Why not? Because of the perverted soul ties in us. Her beautiful young daughter, Michelle, is still inside. Her mother is convinced that, like other church members, she's been brainwashed to stay. She had been with me her whole life. I feel as if they reached inside me and ripped my child out of my womb. And what else can happen to members who question Whaley's authority? Deep inside a dark state mental hospital, a follower has languished in silence, force-fed for more than a year. We're told he stopped eating and speaking because Pastor Whaley repeatedly refused to let him speak his mind in her church. And she said it was his religious devils coming against the move of God. Jane Whaley lives here on 65 acres with her family and a number of unrelated church members. But it's not unusual for her to tell other families to split up and scatter among several communal homes. Parents separated from children, brothers from sisters. Most leaders live in big houses and drive fine cars, while members have been known to crowd into their basements and hallways more than a dozen to a house. I've got friends that, that want to get out of there so bad. And they can't, they can't get out because, you know, they have no place to go, no place to run, no place to hide. And if they do get out, uh, they, they come after them and tell them that you're going to go to hell if you do this or, or, or you're out of the will of God and you're going to go to hell. This Spindale police officer knows that can happen. He once helped the Brazilian man who was desperate to get away, but he had no transportation and the church was holding his things. He was trying to, uh, to leave, and they wouldn't uh, take him anywhere. They wouldn't help him get his baggage. Now, since the church is just outside the city limits, the officer went off-duty to pick up the man who wanted out. Where I made the mistake is I went to a travel agency uh, a few minutes afterwards, and he got plane tickets to go to New York. But then when church members telephoned the Rutherford County Sheriff's Department to claim the Brazilian man was a missing person, the case took a rather unconventional turn. Deputies investigated and found out the man was indeed headed out of here and on to New York. And then that information was leaked right back to the church. And the next morning, the officer says a church member ambushed them at the airport to insist, unsuccessfully, that the man return to the word of faith. The local sheriff says that's news to him. Sheriff Dan Good has no knowledge of what you just now said. He may not know that story, but the sheriff's office did look into complaints of child molestation involving this member. I have nothing to say. Does that kind of thing go on in the church fairly regularly? Or? Keith Grindstaff pleaded guilty to two felony charges of indecent liberties with a child, but his pastor, Jane Whaley, kept it quiet. The pastor has also privately admitted to us that she's kept the lid on other sexual affairs involving young girls and other church members. But she's refused our repeated request to talk about anything on camera. For years, locals say the sheriff has ignored claims of other illegal activities inside the church, like details in this letter from a woman who says she was tied and held captive by church members for two weeks. And this former church member says that's true. She says she and a number of fellow parishioners were there along with their pastor, Jane Whaley. I didn't really feel good about it. I believed that uh, she was getting help because that's what we were told. Have you looked hard enough? Have you asked enough questions? Have you done your job? I don't know how else to put it. Well, I think the citizens of this county will tell you that Dan Good does his job, and he's going to continue doing his job regardless of who is involved. Is he in their pocket? I believe so. Several in the area have told us they believe the sheriff may have told his deputies to look the other way because it's the support of church members that put him into office. That's why there's no investigation? Uh, I believe that's right. If an adult wants to do this to themselves, so be it. That's fine. Do whatever you want. But you have absolutely no right to subject the child to this. To me, that's extreme abuse.